Hey YouTube, I want to do a, a video on the uh, Cypress Bank deposit tax, and yes, I am intentionally saying it out loud to highlight the absurdity of it. Okay, it is theft. And uh, to talk about the uh, impact on the prices of precious metals, and the big question, can it happen here? Right? Is, is our money safe in our own banks? So let's, let's get into that. So first of all, I am, this is the biggest head scratcher to me in, in a long time, guys. I, I can't even believe that somebody thought that this was a good idea to just outright steal people's money. Okay, not the bondholders, not the bondholders, the people that basically knowingly put their money at risk in a risky investment. Okay, not the stockholders, also people that put their money at risk with a risky investment, the depositors. People that innocently put their money in the bank and to have it just, uh, you know, retirees, people saving for a home, to have it just stolen from them. And they call it a bank deposit tax. I mean, I, I, I'm trying to say it with a straight face. Give me credit. It's absurd. You know, the problem here is they literally just told everyone in Spain Portugal, Ireland, and Italy that they're happy to steal their money. You know, the precedent is set. Now, let me be very clear on something here. They haven't taken a dime. Okay, this is a proposal for conditions of a bailout. But that's, that's the problem, is by even suggesting it, it's telling people that it's on the table. Okay, something that would otherwise be thought of, you know, if you had said six months ago that there'll be a country in Europe and the EU will literally just take 10% of their money, deposit as money, you'd be labeled as a kook and a, uh, a conspiracy theorist. Which, I mean, let's be honest, it, it, it's really, the negative connotation there is uh, a little bit unfortunate since really most conspiracy theorists are just kind of peeling back a couple layers or uh, they're peeling back the curtain a little bit to see, you know, what's at work. But whatever. You know, I, I, they use a pretty broad brush description there. But it's happening. It's, it's on the table. And they know precisely what suggesting this means. So this is going to be a very fluid situation. Now, I understand. Russia has a lot of illicit money in Cyprus. Okay, from, uh, from uh, money laundering and some of their illicit activities. But when is it, and maybe this is their way of getting Russia involved. But historically, when has it ever been a good idea to poke Russia with a stick? And guys, the amount of money is inconsequential. Seven to ten billion dollars. Let me just say that again. Seven to ten billion dollars. Do you know how long it takes Ben Bernanke to print seven to ten billion dollars? 1.7 hours. He prints $85 billion a day. Go watch a crappy Nicolas Cage movie. By the time it's done, you'll have your 7 to $10 billion. It's amazing to me that they would try to undermine the entire European banking system over that little amount of money. You know, there was a time where our, you know, our currencies were backed by something, right? Silver and gold. Now it's backed by confidence. Why would you erode that confidence over seven to ten billion dollars? This little faux pas of theirs may actually end up costing them much more than that quickly. So why why they would even do it, I have no idea. You know, people have talked about you know using it as a trial balloon to see you know use it on a small country and see if it happens. I don't even know why they'd want to do that. You know, it seemed like a lot of calm and order had been restored to the market. The Dow's at record highs. The European stock markets have recovered. You know, the uh, bond yields have come down. And it seemed like things were kind of getting back to where they wanted them. Now, understand, those of us that follow it really closely realize that, um, the, the, that uh, all the issues have not been resolved. Okay, but as far as the average person seeing it, it looked like things were getting better. I don't know. This is, uh, this is going to be a really interesting story to follow. So how is it going to influence uh, precious metals, gold and silver? Well, so far we have our answer, don't we? It hasn't, 
impacted them at all. They've basically flatlined through this whole thing. You know, historically, gold and silver have been a safe haven, a fear trade, right? If, uh, if something really bad happens in the world, people flood into gold and silver, and it just hasn't happened here. So that's a bit of a tell to me. Okay, if you're buying gold and silver because you're afraid, eh, that might not be the best reason. You know, if you're expecting a parabolic spike based on a fear event, eh, <laughs> it's probably not going to happen. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about it many times, you know, but I'll, I'll just say it again. And I know that many of you share my view because we've had really rational discussions about it. We think it's a long-term story. We think it's a great way to store wealth. We think it's a great motivational tool to uh, build our wealth, right? I mean, I love chasing this stuff down. And I work my butt off to do it. And I know that you guys do too. But as far as a fear trade, hmm, probably not happening. You know, that parabolic spike that uh, you know everybody fantasizes about with any investment probably isn't going to happen because of a little island nation in the Mediterranean, you know, uh, having a bank run, unfortunately. So here's the big question. And uh, somebody at work asked me this because we were having a discussion about it. Can this happen here? Well, first of all, one of the advantages that we have is that we can print our own money. Okay, so you're not literally going to see them uh, go through and have a bank deposit tax. And I'm using air quotes there. They're, they're not literally going to steal your money out of the bank. But my answer to my coworker was they already are. They're already stealing your money. And they're actually stealing that same 10%. It's just going to take them a year to do it through inflation. Okay, our monetary policies are creating inflation. And if you go by shadow stats, okay, which is using the, uh, the government's own data from, I think it was 1982. If we went, they, they changed the way that they measure inflation in the early 80s. If we went back to their traditional metrics and use shadow stats, the inflation rate right now is 10%. Okay, and that 10% versus basically nothing that a bank would pay you means that a year from now, your, your bank deposit would be worth 10% less. So yeah, they're killing you slowly. You know, it's the old uh, frog in a pot. Turn the, pot uh, turn the water up slowly so it doesn't hop out versus throwing a lobster in head first. The net result is they're both boiled at the end. So yeah, the, the U.S. will never uh, go through and just whack you for 10% in one shot. But over time, the net result is the same. So give me your thoughts, guys. This is, like I said, this is going to be a really fluid situation. And I, I'm really curious, what, what is at play here? And what they could possibly think uh, is to their advantage by, by uh, angering, angering Russia over this. Although I have seen that Russia is now offering a, uh, a deal to uh, kind of partner up with Cyprus. And who knows, maybe they'll be uh, out of the European Union. I don't know. This is going to be really interesting. Give me your thoughts.